How's it going guys, guys, and pals? I'm Alice from Wonder One Ed, your favourite Kiwi trans girl, and I'm an alcoholic. For this reason, the idea of a certain mythological man turning water into wine is of particular interest to me. But you know what else is of particular interest to me? Sucking on blongs and chewing on dongs. Gay rights. Why are you gay? Who says I'm gay? In today's video, I have uncovered some particularly interesting new evidence regarding a particular Jesus H. Christ. Join me as we investigate. I believe that femboys are better than Jesus. But why? Now, before we get into the hardcore facts, I have two things I would like to say. First off, if you're a conservative and you clicked on this video just to leave a hate comment, welcome. Would you like a cup of tea? I should think in today's day and age that we can have a respectful discussion without discourse. So stay tuned and hear me out before you comment. The second thing I'd like to say is gumption. I just think it's a funny word. Now, what is my new evidence, you may ask? Well, Let's get started on who Jesus was just to get the ball rolling. From there we can examine who femboys are and evaluate the pros and cons of both. Now there is plenty of historical documentation to analyse here. Lots of paintings, lots of rumours and there's even a long, not very well written and at times quite contradictory book expounding on the exploits of our person of interest, Mr. Christ. So to break it down, let's just quickly set the scene for Jesus' life. Born somewhere around 0 BC to a poor family in the Roman occupied town of Bethlehem, nowadays known as Pal- Actually, you know what, I'm not even going to say that word. He had a rough start and found himself homeless for some time. He ended up as a carpenter after a fairly uneventful childhood and is said to have made some nice chairs and some interesting looking sideboards. We can see that even early on, Jesus had a passion for playing around with wood. Particularly hard wood. Regardless, the dude made tables. Things took a turn in his early 30s and Jesus fell in with an interesting crowd. Carpentry wasn't giving him everything he needed and so of course he made the wise decision to turn to hardcore dr So he turned to lay preaching as a side gig and showed some early talent. This is where things get interesting and we have a bit more documentation about his life and times. There are in fact four, possibly five now, short books that follow his rise to fame from the time published by four of his friends, Matthew, Mark, John and Luke, in what appears to be a race to grab the publishing rights to his biography. The fifth recently discovered book seems to have fallen out of the race to be included in the popular four book series, The New Testament, which makes up the second half of the aforementioned critically acclaimed best selling Holy Bible. The whole thing is pretty similar to the Dune series written by Frank Herbert and his children, so if you really wanted, you could just do what I did and choose to believe that Dune is the Bible. Or you could even wait for the third movie that's coming out starring Timothy Charlemagne. I need to see him f a slug. <clears throat> Back to Jesus. Just like me, he's single. Despite having a gut so large, the clapping of his glizzy riz cheeks alerted the skin. There is no reference in any of the copious rings of documentation about any kind of love interest whatsoever. But Jesus' riz is well known throughout the lands. The baby grunt Jesus rizzed up Livy Dunn's Skuck's brother long before humongous gats were even drip. In between choking on glizzy and choking on rainbow vomit, we know that he hangs out with a large number of other men. This is the first information we have that raises a couple questions. We know of at least 12 of these guys, and some of them have some pretty colourful things going on. One guy, John, goes on to become quite the writer and publishes a lot of essays and letters to a wide range of people. There's another one, Judas, who goes on to betray Jesus, which famously gets him killed in the end. Several of them appear to be not very successful fishermen until Jesus shows them an innovative new fishing technique. Now that is impressive. They all sit around drinking and eating a lot. Jesus also seems to have had some connections in the liquor trade. Though there are some questions about the quality of his copious supply of wine, some even say that he was caught watering it, some of it down for the bigger gigs, so that's definitely some dodgy behaviour that warrants further inspection. Regardless, Jesus goes on to die twice after doing some fairly notable things. That's who Jesus was. Now, let's look at the other end of the table. Femboys. Femboys are cute boys that dress feminine, you know, dresses, skirts, thigh highs, crop tops, all that jazz. Most femboys grew up and went through school as a boy. Presumably sometime during their teenage years, they started to experiment and found out a few things about themselves, not the least of which is that they enjoyed playing dress up. This may or may not have subjected them to some derision from their peers, a challenge that unfortunately many face. Regardless, as they perfected their skills, they got better and better at looking feminine until it became something of a lifestyle. Taking the bonds of masculinity and bending them, saying 
fuck you, society. I'm not gonna be what you expect of me. I'm going to subvert society's expectations of me. Typically, one can say that a majority of femboys are attracted to other men. And the best part is that this almost always works. And lately, even straight men have begun questioning themselves as femboys become more and more mainstream. This is, of course, fantastic. So then, let's weigh them up. Jesus versus femboys. Which is better? And you will start to see what I'm getting at here. What did Jesus do? He played with a lot of hardwood and made tables. That's not really worth a point. What he did do, he turned water into wine. We'll give him one. But femboys, femboys can answer straight back as well because they turned straight men gay. Something equally thought to be impossible before it was done. Then Jesus walked on water. Femboys walked on my cousin. Uh, Jesus wore a dress. Femboys wore a dress. Jesus died and came back from the dead. The femboy trend is immortal. Jesus, son of God. Femboys, son. Are you winning, son? No, I died twice. Uh, so right there, we see that femboys and Jesus are actually more or less equal. Equally deserving of worship, but that may not have been the outcome you expected clicking on this video Seeing that title femboys are better than Jesus. What do you mean Alice? They're very clearly equal here. You liar, but no I have Other thoughts It pains me to admit that I am a being of deception and in an effort to get you to click onto this video and listen to my crack shot theory, I may have lied. Will you do me the honor of sticking around for another couple minutes to hear the truth? Shall we dive in? Let's go back to this famous image. Jesus with who I can only assume to be 12 of his homicidal lovers. This is where I get quite suspicious. They dress very well for mostly unemployed fishermen. Lots of colorful duds and some interesting outfits for sure. Long, flowing, comfortable fabrics. So much effort put into how they look. Which brings me to the new and very interesting information that I hinted at at the very start of this video and that you have probably forgotten about. Through some investigative research, I can reveal an early portrait of Jesus Christ, or in this case, Jesus Christ, as it comes to us from Portugal. Let this sink in. What you are looking at here is a painting of Jesus from the 16th century and I believe it is the key. The final piece of the puzzle that we have been missing all of this time. The portrait can be viewed in the National Palace of Sintra in southern Portugal. Is it truly any wonder why the Portuguese have come back again and again to this portrait to look at it time and time again for 500 years. You can feel the allure from the long, flowing, gorgeous locks to the eyes clearly darkened with some form of primitive eyeshadow to that pensive look, that facial expression, exposed shoulders, strappy backless dress, and look, not a single strand of body hair on that body. As for the facial hair, well, perhaps Juliet razors hadn't yet been perfected. Lord knows that's why I use Chic. And so to you, the viewer, I posit not that femboys are better than Jesus, nor that Jesus is better than femboys. I posit to you that what we are looking at here is in fact an early primitive femboy from centuries past. I posit that they are one and the same. Ladies and gentle people, it is my humble belief that Jesus and his friends seen here are not only better than femboys, they were the originals. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this stupid video, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you want to support my channel and help me make more and better videos, you can hit the join button down below and become a commissioned officer in my queer army. It's awesome. We also have members only videos. It's sick. Do it. You can also do it on Buy Me A Coffee. They actually give me a higher percentage of your donation so that I get more bang for your buck if that's what you want. It's just a little bit more awkward. You're fucking gay!